in the northwest frontier province of Pakistan, the biggest of several special refugee camps which have been set up to house the ever-increasing number of Afghan refugees who have left their homes and crossed the Khyber Mountains into Pakistan. They're being well received here in Pakistan. Each head of family identifies himself to the local Pakistani government official. His thumbprint is taken and he is given money, six pounds per month for each member of his family, regardless of age. The Afghans are also given free food and clothing. It's a gift a country like Pakistan can ill afford. But the Afghans are Muslims, and so too are the Pakistanis, and the bond is a strong one. This government official told me, if there was no refugee camp, I would take as many of them as I could into my own home. Most of the men here have been involved in fighting the Russians, and many carry what has become the status symbol of the Afghan rebel, the Russian Kalashnikov automatic rifle, immediately identifiable by its curved magazine. Each owner of a Kalashnikov, or three, will tell you he took it from a dead Russian soldier. The proudest trophy of war in this camp is this man's belt, the starred buckle, the clue to its nationality. The Russian who owned it, I was told, is dead. The mountains of Afghanistan, so clearly visible in the distance, are a powerful reminder to these Afghans of their homes, and they speak with passion of the struggle which they say they will win, however long it takes. These men, again with their trophies of war, told me the Russians bombed their village with poison gas. It stung their eyes, ears and throats, made them vomit, then knocked them out. At first, they thought it was fatal because so many people passed out. They say it's the only weapon the Russians have which can flush the rebels out of their favorite hiding places, caves and ravines in the mountains. And when they're forced out, I was told, the Soviet tanks come in. Once they've settled their families, these men will cross the mountains again and fight. The camp itself could be a lot worse. There's a good water supply and the soil is fertile. But coming from the fresh, healthy air of the Afghan hills to the heat of Pakistan has brought dysentery, diarrhea, bronchitis, pneumonia, gastritis and worms, especially to the children. And still the refugees come, at the present rate, up to 1,500 a day. A few men, many orphans and widows. Muslim Brotherhood is one thing, but before long, the hard economic facts of housing the Afghan refugees could present Pakistan with a major problem. John Suchet, News at 10, on the northwest frontier.